Hey there everyone, welcome back to Learn to Play TV and let me just take a minute real quick and I want to apologize because I've been MIA these last few weeks, you know, in process of moving and helping out family and many, many other things I've just been working on and really trying to uh, just get things flowing. But that's really no excuse, but I am here today to show you the newly released Pacific Rim Hero Clicks. Now these came out uh, probably about a week ago. It's taken me forever to try and find these. All of my stores, they haven't received them, but I finally found one today and we're gonna go ahead and dive right in and see some of these amazing sculpts and amazing dials that they have to offer. Now the Pacific Rim set is only 10 figures in this set, so it's a really small set. There is a mini game that they released with it that comes with two figures as well as some bystander tokens, but there's no real rarity. Most of these characters, I believe, are all common. There's no chases or rares or super rares. So let's see what we have in this first pack here. Now, the artwork is actually pretty cool on these. They have like these mech Gundam machines um, and a couple of the figures on the back. Uh, I'm not seeing any holes in these packs. I know that the Lord of the Rings had some in there and we were, I was kind of curious to see what those were, but they're not on here. So. We'll just continue on, and let's see what our first one is, and it is, oh, this is pretty cool. This is Gunner. Oh, interesting. That is a big sculpt. These set, or this set, I'm sorry, um, does come with some very big pieces, uh, really cool looking. They were advertising that they're about two and a half inches tall, and wow, these sculpts are just really, really nice. That is very, very cool. All right, well, let's move on and see what else we get. I haven't seen this movie yet. I have heard that it is really good, and a lot of my friends that have seen it, they're really looking to uh, get me to go and see this, so maybe this weekend. And, oh, we've already got our first double. Yeah, to be expected, there is only 10 figures in this set, so oh, that's pretty cool. It is a cool-looking monster. Maybe I can get a, a nice little trade for that. These figures are very heavy. These packs are definitely a lot heavier than all the other sets. Oh, this one's a cool monster, and this is Leatherback. Now, from what I've read, he's the heaviest out of this set, and man, you can definitely tell this guy is huge. Wow, look at this guy. Just another amazing sculpt. I'm really, really liking that. WizKids, keep it up. If you're gonna keep releasing sets like that, that's pretty awesome. Well, we got three down, three to go. Let's see if we get a couple different ones here. And this one here is another monster, and this is Raiju. Well, that's interesting looking. Man, I'm really going to have to see this movie and figure out what all these characters are. That is very, very cool. Haven't pulled any of the robots or the mechs or Gundams or whatever they call them in this movie. And this one's actually pretty heavy, too. I hope it's not another double. But let's see. Oh, and it is another double, another Leatherback. Wow, getting a lot of doubles today. Well, that's all right, still another good sculpt. And our last one. Let's see, come on, something different. And it is, this is Knifehead. And that is another really cool looking sculpt. Didn't pull any of the machines or the mechs. All monsters in this so far, so man, I may have to go pick up a couple more and see if I can get some of those. But this sculpt is also very, very cool. Wow. Definitely liking this set. Keep it up, Wits Kids. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and pull the rest of these out, and we'll get them all set up, and we'll go over their dials. Be back in just a second. All right, we're all set up, and let's dive right in. We're going to talk about Leatherback. This guy can be played at two point values, one at 450 and the other at 225. Man, these guys' abilities are just insane. He's got improved movement, and when he moves through blocking terrain, he actually breaks through it. And he also has a trait called Monstrous Toxic Creature from the Deep. And it states, Leatherback can use Poison and the Giant Reach ability. When it occupies water and terrain, modify its attack and damage value by plus one. Now the Giant Reach ability allows him to do melee attacks from two squares away. So you're going to make sure that you want to be outside of that range because this guy's going to hit hard. He also has Charge and Flurry and this defense ability he has called Shrug Off Missiles is just ridiculous. 
it states Leatherback can use invulnerability and Leatherback ignores damage from range combat attacks. So the only way you're going to be able to get in is you're going to be right up in his face, but that's where he wants you. He does get exploit weakness later in his dial and this next part here. They have their own built-in like mystics ability and it's called Kaiju and it states when a character using the Kaiju team ability takes damage from an attack, the attacker is dealt one unavoidable damage. This damage is not an attack. Now that's going to be crucial uh, and hurt a lot of players because they're not going to be used to it and everyone knows you know how much everyone loves mystics and that just can be so annoying but wow these monsters are going to be awesome this guy is called scunner he's another really cool looking sculpt and it's starting to look like all of these monsters have this improved movement with the blocking terrain that breaks on impact as well as this trait called monstrous toxic creature from the deep and just like leatherback it allows him to use poison with giant reach ability as well as if it occupies water or terrain it modifies its attack and damage value by plus one now that's just pretty cool across all of the monsters it's an awesome trait to have He's also got a couple movement abilities. He's got one that's called Ganashing Thrashing Nightmare. And it states Scunner can use charge, but doesn't have its value. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> that is awesome. I understand for a higher point value, you know, you're only going to be playing really these guys in high point value games. But man, he has a, he, like, he's got a nine movement right now. So he can hit you from nine squares away with charge. Ridiculous. His next is his attack ability, it's called Chomper Stomper. And it states Scunner can use Blade Claw Fang and Quake. Now here's the kicker. When it rolls a D6 for Blade Claw Fang, its printed damage value is the minimum result. Now let's just take a look real quick and see what this guy has on his dial. All right, so it is his, oh, there it is. That's his attack ability, the white ability. So if he were to use Blade Claw Fang right there, he is going to hit you for no less than five damage. What? That's just ridiculous. I mean, if you're not using Blade Claw Fang just to try and get a six, uh, you're not playing this character right. I mean, it's almost like a free chance to get a six on that. And if you miss, you still hit him for five. Like, what's not to love about that? And even later in the dial, I mean, there it is. He's got 12 there, and he's got another five damage. I mean, this guy is just awesome. Very, very powerful. But moving on, he does get Steel Energy. Um, and he also has that Kaiju keyword effect that essentially is like his Mystics damage. Oh, these guys are just great. But let's move on and see if these continue to get even better. This guy is called Raiju, and he also has two point values. 400 points is the first, and 250 would be the second. Now, he does have the improved movement as well as the trait. And it looks like he's got a white attack ability here called Thunder Beast, and it states Raiju can use Pulse Wave as if it had a range value of 8. When it does, it deals damage equal to half its printed damage value to each hit character, no matter how many characters are within range. That is pretty awesome. Run this guy into a pack of all your opponents and use that ability, and he's going to hit all of them for half his damage. And I think this guy's damage when he's using that ability, let's see, oh, there it is. He's got a five damage right there with that ability. So he's going to hit that, uh, let's see, so we round up. Everyone's going to take three damage no matter how many targets he has. That is just awesome. Now this guy just keeps getting better and better. He's got a ton of defenses here with impervious, invulnerability, and toughness throughout his dial. But I'm really liking his damage ability right here called Maximum Toxicity. And it states when Raiju uses poison, damage dealt is penetrating damage. Now on top of, he also has his Kaiju keyword here, which is his Mystic's ability. Now here's what I'm thinking, is with all of this just amazing abilities that he could use to just tear your opponents apart. What if you were to throw one of the new hammers on him from the Book of Skull? Uh, let's say Scotty's hammer and give him exploit weakness. Now all of these monsters, you give them that hammer, every attack that they're doing is exploit damage. These guys are going to tear through armies left and right. And here's the last of the monsters we pulled today. This guy is called Knifehead, and he also has his improved movement and monstrous toxic creature from the deep trait like the rest of them, which is great abilities. But 
I'm really liking his movement ability right here. His white movement ability is called Bone Knife, Head Blade, Slash and Slice. Now, who, who really thinks up these names, for one? But that's just kind of sidestep. <laughs> this is just great. But this allows you to give Knife Head a move action. When you do, its speed and damage values are locked for this action. Move Knife Head along a direct path and after action resolve, make a close combat attack as a free action that targets all opposing characters that were moved through. Each hit character is dealt damage equal to Knife Head's damage value. Now, that is just an awesome charge with an asterisk on it. So everyone that you charge through in a direct line movement is gonna take damage equal to your damage value. There's no reduction off of it. So he could hit your whole team if you were to line them up correctly. Man, that is just an awesome ability. These guys are almost overpowered. It's what I'm really thinking. And like I was talking about in the last monster, we add a resource dial to some of these guys, and they're going to be unstoppable. Little one-man armies. Not to mention they're Colossus figures, so they have even more advantage to using them. Alright, folks, that brings us to the end of this unboxing. Hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed opening these up. I'm really looking forward to playing some of these characters. These characters are in my eyes, overpowered as it is, but they could be a lot of fun in some of the fun games. So let's see how these play out. I hope you guys have a great week. Also, remember to please give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, we have new videos coming out. So stay tuned and I will see you all later.